Hello, it's Alden. Here's how I use Blender to make this 3D set extension. Production flew by and we didn't have time to reset for an ultra wide shot. I was fine with the wide shot as is, but as I was editing, I thought, let me try a 3D set extension. So I took a behind the scenes photo and a location scout image and got started in Photoshop. So I like to use content aware first just to get something that replaces um, whatever I'm Photoshopping out using the surrounding image and materials. You're gonna see some repetition, but then I'll go in and use the patch tool to clean that up when I'm done. For this location scout image, I had to Photoshop out all of the plants and our producer, Yuki. So I'm going to bring in this image into the camera raw filter. And when you go to geometry, click on this uh, far right option, and you can select your X and Y axes and it will straighten everything out. Hit okay, and then that will apply. And if you use the crop tool, you can then bring it in so you have just the window or the wall with the window rather. Now take that image and import it into Blender with images as planes. So I lined everything up in Photoshop, but the window itself was so irregular that those straight lines don't carry all the way down. So I actually had to use the knife tool to cut everything out. And this was a little bit tedious. So I basically took every single window pane, every single different layer in all of the window cells and manually cut it all up. And what I'm cutting out is every piece of this image that's going to be extruded forward or backward. So the windows and the immediate borders around the windows are at a different level. The whole kind of pane around each section of four panes. There are little pieces of wood down there on the bottom of all of the windows. And all of those are gonna be at a slightly different depth. So I first need to cut out to make sure I get that geometry, including this, you know, the curved areas of the windows here. Okay, so I'm gonna select all of my window panes and duplicate my material and call it glass. And to start, just turn the roughness down. I'm doing that now just because that's going to uh, be a whole process later. Then I'm gonna select everything that's not the main wall and extrude it backwards. One thing that's helpful when you're extruding is to go in one direction. So keep extruding back or forward because if you extrude things forward and then backwards, you're gonna end up with extra sides. And that does happen to me a few times too, just because I missed a selection or something. Now let's select all of the window panes and extrude those ones. Do a quick little test with a point light. This is just an EV. I like to take two different colored lights, put them on either side, just so I can see the shadows being created from each light a little better. And there we go. Like we just have some basic geometry there that's going to look pretty decent um, when we've got some light on it. Because we did all of these extrusions, it stretched the texture. So now is the more tedious part than even cutting things out, which is selecting all of the surfaces that you created, hit U, unwrap, and then go set it to another part of the texture. This is when it's nice just to listen to some music, listen to a podcast, maybe turn on the TV and watch some Star Trek or something while you're doing it because you know you need to pay attention to sort of what you're doing, but I just wanna pass the time. Also noticing all, you know, as I'm getting in here with the texture, I'm noticing extra little pieces that could be extruded. So just touching everything up that way. Now let's take our image of the ceiling and bring it into FSpy. So I'm gonna select the X and Y axes, line up with this tool here. There, get the floor, edges of the ceiling, and then this other wall here. Check to see if my perspective is working and it's looking okay. All right, now we're in here in Blender. So I'm going to import my FSpy file um, that I just created and I'm going to model this ceiling area. Okay, I'm gonna set my background images to front so I can see it over my plane there. And then instead of extruding, I'm just gonna add a cube to the mesh and just kind of line it up. Move it over, scale it along the Y axis and just get something that looks like it is where that column would be. That is actually not half bad. So I'm gonna add a new material. 
use that same Photoshopped image, set UV project, make sure the X and Y is the aspect ratio of the image itself, add a subdivision surface set to simple and five, and then there we go. We have this texture projected onto this new geometry. So I'm gonna apply these effects and then go adjust the, the UV here. For the side wall, I took this um, behind the scenes photograph and Photoshopped out me standing in front of the wall. And I did the same process with FSpy to line it up and do the extrusions up here, create some geometry for the blinds and then just project this onto the blinds as well. And then I added a pipe, a small pipe around the corner I added this door in. I think I projected this texture here on the door. There's kind of this multicolored iridescent film on the windows there. And because of the Photoshop, it didn't look super great. So I just made a material. So basically take everything here. Here's the sidewall, the ceiling, and the walls here. I just duplicated it and added an array modifier. And this is the basic geometry of the room. The main wall, I have the wall glass and frosted glass. So this frosted glass texture here comes from A2 3D. And I think it's like $6 a month. You can have all of these PBR materials and you download them. And what's kind of cool is they have this plugin in Blender where you can import the PBR texture with all of this stuff ready to go. And so I took that material, made a duplicate of it, and changed the base color so that instead of the frosted glass repeating pattern that it came with, I used this actual image textures. The other thing that I needed was um, a bunch of more details on here. So I looked at production footage, I looked at behind the scenes images, and um, here's all of the details. Um, that I added. There's like this wood shelves. There are these C clamps and that C clamp is just an image here. And then just these little things on the windows here I added. And then this was something I think it's used to hang plants. And there's also this pipe here that sticks out. I went back to the behind the scenes footage to remind myself of all of the other furniture that exists in the room and started to model it, starting with this dresser and record player over in the corner. So now I'm gonna bring in, there was some stuff sitting on the dresser and this is a 3D scan I did with Polycam of just this like motherboard piece. So I'm gonna go in here, just delete some of that crap, but um, let's have that sitting on the dresser. Add another one. There we go, just some like techno trash details. I'm gonna make two different materials for the speaker, the kind of metal material and then also the fabric mesh for the speaker itself, bevel it a bit. I'm gonna do the same thing for the record, like a black metal and then a silver metal. For the dresser though, it's pretty simple and white, so I'm going to add this kind of grunge texture. Let's kind of use that to add some dirt and grime to the dresser, something subtle, um, but just something to break it up. I do that by making two different materials and then using the texture as the factor between the two of them. And there's also this cloth on the corner, so I'm gonna try a cloth sim and just drop it. So taking a plane, subdividing it, and um, dropping it onto the dresser after setting it as a collision object. There, something like that is good. And I can just apply the effect and then it'll stay. Um, shade smooth, subdivi subdivide it, for this little block of wood, I just added a PBR texture of old wood, make it a little bit darker, have it line up to that production footage a little better. And then I'm going to use a cylinder here with an array modifier and um, use Boolean to remove uh, those. So line that up, set it to Boolean, apply, and there we go. But then I'm gonna go inside here um, and just set that inside to a dark material. There we go. Add a pipe material to these pipes. I'm going to duplicate that pipe and add it back to the ceiling. So basically everything that I Photoshopped out of that ceiling, now I'm adding it in in 3D. Then I'm going to add sections 
to the pipe of where it's connected to the ceiling. So splice it, hit Alt E, extrude along normals, and then I'm going to take a couple of those faces and just extrude them up into the ceiling. Now I'm gonna take, these are just some decals from textures.com, import them as images planes, and bring them up onto the ceiling, and that's just gonna create some wear and tear, some irregularity. Um, I set them to shrink wrap so that they stick up there. Now let's set up our shot and our render. So the first thing I did was make sure that the camera was the same setting as we had in production. So I looked at our camera report. Um, we are shooting with the Panasonic EVA-1, so the image sensor is 24.6 millimeters. I think the default here is 35. So you change that here in your camera setting and set it to 14 millimeters, which was our lens. So first I'm going to take pull the camera back. This is the reference shot, so this is um, the, the wide as we shot it. And in here, in the background images properties, I'm just going to scale it down a bit. So let's start with half. Okay, so we wanna line this up. Maybe it's a little bit bigger than that. Something like there looks pretty good. And then we use the compositor in Blender um, just because it was coming in like all of my edges, none of them were beveled, so it was a little strong. So I wanted to just um, soften those edges a little bit. So I have a defocus and a lens distortion. The lens distortion creates this kind of chromatic aberration here, and the um, defocus is gonna blur it. And I have a texture here, which is a circle, and I use that for both the defocus and the lens distortion, so it just is around the edges, so everything is pretty clean here in the middle where it's going to share an edge with our production footage. But then on the outside, it's going to be less in focus, and have that kind of color shift. And that just, I thought, added to the realism a little bit. Then we take our render, bring it into After Effects and composite it together, adjusting the color and getting all of the brightness and shadow values to match our production footage. And then going in here and choosing where the seam is going to be is important. I try to find an edge if I can, um, like an edge to the window pane or something to hide it a little bit, feather it out. And then you end up with a 3D set extension using behind the scenes and location scout photos and Blender. And then because you've built everything in 3D, you can do some other cool effects like adding outlines. Let me know in the comments below what other kind of tutorials you wanna see so you can get your movie made.